This is Windows 7 build 6568, the first available milestone to build of Windows 7. Gosh, that intro was so mouthful. We're gonna take a look at all changes within this build. Straight into the desktop, we are seeing one difference. The show desktop button there. It is now enabled by default. Well, this is the first time we properly see this button and this position. Well, the last time we see this button on this position was Windows 2000 built 1773, built on March 8th, 1998, almost 20 years prior. It functions well as intended. It will show the desktop when you have programs that filled up the screen. Moving to the taskbar again, system tray items are now highlighted when you hover over it. This also applies to items inside the notification tray. Start menu is now expanding wider than we have seen in build 6519. Looking back at the desktop, if you right click on it, you can see that gadgets now fall under one option on context menu rather than having two of them for adding and hiding gadgets like in the last build. Opening the Windows Explorer, within this build, you can now see Aero Snap as it's now enabled by default, although it still doesn't have the animation and it directly snaps the window to any side. Well, aside from that, we can see that libraries are now also enabled by default, which will are seen in build 6519. This library system is helmed under the user folder as you can see. Well, speaking of that, Navigation pane is now simplified by displaying libraries and folders in one tree view, rather than separating them into two sections using this button below. The option for preview pane has been added to the command bar. Views dropdown is moving to the right side of the command bar too, just like in Windows 7. Oh also, did you notice that the gradient on it is reverting back to Windows Vista version rather than the blue version first seen in build 6469? Okay. Now, we are getting to the system applications. Math Input Panel is now included in this build and is available in the final version of Windows 7. It will display math equations based on your drawing if your drawing is good enough. And you can correct it if there's anything wrong with the writing interpretation. Or also, <laughs> side note, what is the result of these equations? <laughs> Tell me in the comments down below. Windows Media Player went through a minor redesign yet again, with the upper bar now integrated to the title bar with transparency. The lower bar now uses a black gradient and adds the option beside the new playlist button. As for other application, on-screen keyboard, it is now using modern design. I don't know what happens with the osk2.exe found in build 6519, but I think some functionalities are ported to this one or amalgamated? Well, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Although XPS Viewer still has EP suffix on search, the suffix is now removed in the actual program itself. PowerShell, which was previously bundled by default in this, is now upgraded to version 2.0, but I'm still stupid to do even anything in here. Moving the control panel, you can see that there is a fade animation whenever you navigate between certain pages in a program. Personalization applet is now overhauled with the design resembling what we see in the final version of Windows 7, although in here it's more simplified. As for new applets, we got a bunch of them. Well, for example, feedback applet lets you create an issue report. Windows Healthcare, which was an early version of Action Center with yet simpler design. Windows Firewall now opens inside the control panel rather than spawning a window. Troubleshooting applet lets you solve any problems in the computer- oh, oh. <laughs> We only got a few of them in here, well, it's a beta build I guess. Clear type text tuning for adjusting font smoothing to your display since it's now enabled by default in Windows Vista and Windows 7. And yeah, there is a display image which is just stretched up Windows XP display image! And Windows Keyring for well, security reason. Because, well, I, I, I actually confused when I open it, well, it just does this. <laughs> Fonts applet, not the upper one, but the lower one, that functions as adjustment to font installation, which are not easily accessible in Windows 7. And screen resolution is now available inside the display applet, rather than spawning the old XP version. I love that the resolution option is using combo box rather than scroll button thingy like what we have in Windows 7, which is actually way easier there. I don't know, well, 
because of this, I don't know how to say it, it just feels wrong or cursed. Switching a bit to the taskbar, we see that the notification area option has been removed from the taskbar properties. Both red pill and blue pill function exist in here. You can enable red pill by using this value on this key within registry editor. And by restarting windows, superbar is now enabled by default. System try icons are now visible within one row, rather than two. And the show desktop button can be used for error pick too with the window border visible. As for the taskbar, we got some minor additions like the expand button which doesn't exist in Windows 7 as we know. There's an early version of jump list by holding the mouse from the app box at the top. It's still work in progress, but for real, it's still work in progress because we got nothing! <laughs> Just like the previous build, we can hide app labels via registry editor. Desktop background slideshow from previous build is also available here via registry editor by enabling enable DBS. There's an addition to the cap- Oh! It doesn't have anything? Oh yeah, I forgot. I have to use blue pill. I have to enable it. As you know, this build is one of the first one to utilize blue pill, a feature enablement mechanism. You can enable it by using a special ISO and installing blue pill from there. After restarting the OS for the third time, we have some new changes. Calculator, which uses a strange design with this theme bunch of new brushes and shapes in paint, zoom slide bar and image support in wordpad, and here you see, sticky note as its own app rather than a gadget. Well, this really looks promising for Windows 7 development to go forward, new features are added, new design, as well as many things. I honestly want the beta Windows 7 taskbar design to be implemented in the final version of Windows 7, or maybe mod can do a great job, yeah, that can definitely be done for some people because why not? Hey, even I was pretty excited.